Hello guys, welcome to part two of the Veeam Backup and Replication version 10 series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at restoring virtual machines and also restoring files from our SIF server backups. First up, we'll be looking at the virtual machine component where we'll be restoring a virtual machine from our scale out backup repository. And then we'll be doing an instant VM restore from our S3 object storage. Thirdly, we'll then restore a file from within the VM backups. And then we'll move on to looking at restoring files from our SIF server backups. So first up on screen here, we have our Windows 2016 server, which is the Veeam server. And we're going to launch the Veeam console. We'll go ahead and click on connect. Just a quick recap here. We've got our VMware VM backups job, and that is backing up two virtual machines. One's a Windows Server 2016, and one's Windows Server 2019. Both of those are web servers, and I'm gonna log in to the vCenter web UI now, just to show you where those virtual machines are. I'll type in my username and password and click login. You can see up on screen here, we have our VLAB AVC1, which is our vCenter server. And within there, we have our data center called site A, our cluster called cluster A1. And then we have our two virtual machines, web server 16 and web server 19. So within those virtual machines, I've got a PowerShell script that generates a new index.html each day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to each one of those servers and just show you what that index.html file does or displays up on screen. So we'll start with web server 16, which has an IP address of 192.168.1.240. And the page displays some information about the server itself. So we've got today's date, which is Sunday, the 5th of April, 2020. We have the operating system, which is Microsoft Windows Server 2016 standard. And then we have the host name called Web Server 16, the IP address, and then the total amount of time that this computer has been up for. So this server has just been up for two minutes. Uh, I've just rebooted it, that's why it's uh, quite low. And now we'll go have a look at web server 19, which has an IP address of 192.168.1.241. And here we have up on screen pretty much the same information, except that the operating system is Microsoft Windows Server 2019 standard. We have the host name, which is web server 19, the IP address 192.168.1.241. And then we have the total uptime, which has been 24 days. Now we're going to return back to the Veeam console. And I'm just going to edit the VMware VM backups job. And we're going to go to storage. Now, if you remember back in part one, we created this backup job with a seven day retention policy. And we also used the new GFS option where we marked one full weekly backup. And you can see up on screen here that this backup is being backed up to our scale out backup repository. Now for the entire VM restore, I'm going to be pulling this restore out of the scale out backup repository. So what we'll do now is we'll cancel this screen and we'll head back into the vCenter web UI where we're going to delete web server 16 and then restore it from the scale out backup repository. Now I'm going to select web server 16 I'm going to right click on it and just power it off. Now that it's powered off, I'm going to right click and select delete from disk. To confirm the delete, we'll click on yes. Web server 16 is now being deleted out of the system. So we'll return back to the Veeam console. And up in the top left hand corner, we'll click on home. And notice that I have jobs selected here. We'll click on restore and we'll select VMware vSphere. In this screen, we'll select restore from backup and we'll select entire VM restore. 
Here we'll select entire VM restore. On the right hand side, we'll click on add VM and I'm gonna select from backup. I'll just expand the first column and we'll expand the job name. I'll select web server 16 and click on add. Now I'll select web server 16 again and on the right hand side, we'll click on point. We'll expand the job and here we have all our restore points. I'm gonna to select to restore back to Friday night. That's this restore point that I've selected right here. We'll click on okay and I'll click on next. On this screen, I'm gonna select the restore to a new location or with different settings. And we'll click next. On this screen, I'll just leave it as VLAB A ESXi 1 as the restore host. If you need to change it, you can select the web server, click on the host button and then select the host. I'll click on next. I'm gonna leave the resource pool as resources, but again, if you need to change it, you can select the VM and click on pool and select another resource pool. But now I'll click on next. Here we have the data store that the VM is gonna be restored into. For me, I'm gonna be restoring into VLAB A data store one, so that is correct, and I'll click on next. Now on this screen, we're gonna change the new name of the restored virtual machine. So I'll click on the virtual machine, we'll click on name, and I'll click on add suffix. We'll then click on OK. And also here, note that we're restoring back into the same folder, which was called servers. So now we'll click on next. Now this screen displays the network connections. Here I'm gonna be restoring my virtual machine into the network called virtual machines. If you need to change it, you can select that and click on network. You also have the option to disconnect the network as well by clicking this button here. I'm gonna leave these settings as is and we'll click on next. Before we do the VM restore, we're gonna do a scan for any malware that exists within the virtual machine. And to do that, we select this option here, scan the restored virtual machine for malware prior to performing the recovery. Now to do this, you must have some antivirus or malware scanning software installed on your server. By default, most of the servers have Windows Defender. So that's the one that it's gonna be picking up in this lab and it's gonna be using that to scan for any malware that exists before it restoring the virtual machine. You then have a few options if malware is found within the scan and the options are to proceed with the recovery but disable the network adapters or abort the VM recovery. I'm gonna select abort VM recovery if any malware is found. And lastly, do you want to continue scanning the remaining files for malware or do you want to stop the machine scanning? This window we can type in a restore reason. I'm just gonna type in web server 16 restore and click on next. This window displays a summary of all the settings that we've selected so far. We've also got an option to power on the target VM after it's been restored. I'll leave that off for now and we'll click on finish. Once we click on finish, the restore will begin. You can see in the first few lines here that it has picked up Windows Defender is installed on the Veeam backup and recovery server. So it's gonna use that to do the malware scan. Now this is gonna take a little while, so what I'll do is I'll pause the video and then we'll go through and have a look at the log once it's complete. We're back guys and the backup has completed successfully. Looking up on screen, it looks like it took about 39 minutes to complete. So luckily I paused the video there, otherwise it would have been quite boring. Anyway, let's just scroll up here in the log window and we'll go through and see what happened. So in the beginning, we can see that Windows Defender was picked up from the VBR server and an antivirus or malware scan was completed on this server and it saw that no threats were detected. So it went through, started the restore job we can see that it restored from the backup repository called Soba, which is our scale out backup repository. We can then see that the infrastructure resources were assigned to the job and that it had six files to restore. Now if I scroll down, it goes through the files that were restored. 
There were no VM tags to restore. It prepared the virtual machine disks. It was using the VMware backup proxy to restore hard disk number one. Hard disk number one was 40 gigabytes in size and we can see that it restored 18.7 gigabytes of that disk. We can also see at the bottom that the processing was throttled because it did hit a latency on the primary storage, which is one of the settings that I've got in my Veeam backup and recovery. And the last step, we can see that the restore completed successfully. So I'm gonna click on close. And now we're gonna go into vCenter web user interface. And we can see here that the virtual machine web server 16 underscore restored is successfully within the vSphere system. I'm gonna right click on that virtual machine and power it on. And now that the server's turned on, I'm just gonna close the existing two tabs that we had open before, which were the web server information of the host name, the uptime and so on. So I'll close those two tabs. We'll open up a new tab and we're gonna to go to the web server 16 IP address and we'll see what's displayed on screen. So up on screen, we can see today's date is Friday the 3rd of April, 2020. So that is the date that we did the restore from. Now that we've got the virtual machine restored back to Friday, what we're gonna perform now is a file level restore of the index.html file from today's backup. And then we'll come back to this web page, we'll refresh it, and we should see today's date. So to do that, we're gonna jump back into the Veeam backup and recovery console. Now, once again, just make sure that you've got jobs selected here, and we'll click on restore, and we'll click on VMware vSphere. We'll then click on restore from backup, and this time we're gonna click on guest file restore. We'll then click on Microsoft Windows and we'll expand the job name. We'll select web server 16 and we'll click on next. If I expand the first column, we can see that the backup was performed today at 1.03 p.m. So I'm just gonna select that restore point and click on next. For the reason, I'm just going to type in restoring index.html. And then we'll click on next. There's a short summary of our settings, so we'll click on finish. We now have the backup browser up on screen. So I'm going to expand the C drive. And we're going to go into inet pub folder. We'll go to www root, and here is my index.html file. Now, because we've restored the virtual machine as a new virtual machine, it's gonna have a different ID. So that means, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to restore this file directly into that virtual machine. So in which case, what we'll do is we'll select the file, we'll right click on it, and we'll select copy to. Now I'm gonna copy it to my VBR server just into my documents directory. And I'll click OK. The file is now restored to my documents directory. So we'll browse to that just now. And you can see here that we've got our index.html file. Now what I'll do is I'm just gonna RDP to web server 16. I'll enter in my username and password and press enter. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna to browse to the WW root directory and here we have the index.html. So what I'll do now is I'll just minimize the RDP window and I'm gonna copy the restored index.html and paste it into my web server 16. When asked if I want to overwrite the file, I'll select copy and replace. And now that we've got the restored version of index.html, we'll go back to our Chrome browser and refresh on the web page.
So as you can see here, we've got today's date on Friday, the 3rd of April, 2020. I'm going to click on refresh. And you can see that today's date has changed to Sunday, the 5th of April, 2020. Now we're going to go back to the restore job and we'll close this window and we'll close the backup browser. And then we'll go back into the Veeam backup and recovery console. And now we're going to move on to doing an instant VM recovery. So what we're going to do is we're going to be recovering or booting the VM directly from our S3 object storage. Now to do that, what I'll need to do is I'm going to offline the two extents in my scale out backup repository. So first we'll go to backup infrastructure. We'll click on the scale out backup repository. And I'll right click on SOBAR1 and we'll just select maintenance mode. And we'll do the same thing for SOBAR2. And click close. Now the reason why I'm putting those extents into maintenance mode is because when I try to do an instant VM recovery, it's going to try to do the recovery from the scale-up backup repository. And if that's available, it's going to pull it straight out of there. So I'm kind of forcing it to go through to the S3 object storage. Now we'll click back on home and just make sure that you've got jobs selected. We'll click on restore VMware vSphere. Restore from backup, entire VM restore, and we'll select instant VM recovery, this first option right here. Now on the right side, I'll click on the add button. I'll select from backup. We'll expand the backup. And here we'll select web server 19. Now click on add. And here we're gonna select web server 19. We're going to click on point to select the recovery point. We'll expand the job and we'll go back two days. So that's Tuesday, 10 p.m., 7th of April, 2020. And we'll click OK here and then we'll click on next. And this is what I was talking about before and why I put the extents into maintenance mode. So here we can see that the Veeam Backup and Replication cannot find the required backup files in the performance tier of your scale-up backup repository. And therefore, it's going to use the capacity tier, which is the S3 object storage. So we'll click on OK for that. Now here for this option, I'm going to select Restore to a new location or with different settings. And that's just because I want to change the restored VM name. So we'll click on Next. And for the restored VM name, I'm just going to append underscore restored. So similar to what we did for the web server 16. Now we'll leave host VM folder and resource pool as is. However, we'll just click on the advanced button. And I'm going to leave this on preserve BIOS UUID. And the reason why I'm leaving it on that is because we're just about to go into vSphere and delete the web server 19 virtual machine before we kickstart this restore. However, if you're restoring as a clone VM, then you would want to click on generate a new BIOS UUID. So I'll click on OK here and we'll click on next. Now, when we restore the virtual machine, we're going to need to store the changed blocks somewhere. By default, it stores it in the NFS cache folder on the backup repository's mount server. So in my lab, that's going to be my VBR server. However, uh, we don't know how many changed blocks are going to be stored or how big we need it. Uh, I don't have much space on my VBR server. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on redirect right cache. And I'm actually going to store it in my VLAB A data store one, which is a data store within my vSphere environment. If I click on choose, and I expand my recovery host and default policy. You can see here that we have VLAB A data store one. So I'll be storing the change blocks within that data store. So I'll click on OK. And another reason why you might want to store the change blocks on another data store could be because you need something a little bit faster. So maybe you want to store the change blocks on an SSD data store. Uh, then you can use this option as well to select something different than the VBR server 
or a data store. Maybe that's got a SATA backend or something like that. So my use case is that uh, I don't have enough space on the VBR server. So I've selected the data store VLAB A data store one. And here we'll click on next. Now we've already demonstrated the secure restore when I did the restoration of web server 16. So just for the sake of time, I'm not going to select this option in this instant VM recovery. So we'll leave that unticked and we'll click on next. And here I'm just going to type in a basic reason. So my reason being the web server 19 was accidentally deleted. So before we click on next, we're just going to jump into the vSphere web user interface and we're going to power off and delete our web server 19. Here we are in the vSphere web user interface. If we click on web server 19, the IP address for this server is 192.168.1.241. So we'll just browse to that page. We can see here up on screen that today's date is Friday the 10th of April 2020. So that's what's running on the web server at the moment. Now we'll jump back into the web UI. We'll power off web server 19. And then we'll right click on it and select delete from disk. Web server 19 has now been deleted from the system. So we'll jump back into the Veeam backup and recovery console. And here we are at our wizard. We'll click on next. And here we have a summary of all the settings that we've set so far. We also have the option to connect the virtual machine to the network. So I'll select that. And we also have an option to power on the target VM after restoring. So I'll select that as well. Now we have a warning there to make sure that the original server is powered off. We don't need to worry about that because we have deleted web server 19 from the system. Now we'll click on finish. And you can see straight away here that we cannot find the backup files in the performance tier. And therefore it's preparing the backup from the capacity tier, which is the S3 object storage. Now this might just take a couple of minutes. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and then once it's finished, we'll come back and we'll review the log. Okay guys, our instant VM recovery has now completed successfully. Now we'll just scroll up on the log here and we can see at the beginning there, which I mentioned before, that we could not find the backup files from the performance tier. So it started to look for those backup files in the capacity tier, which was the S3 object storage. Um, it went through and it connected to our recovery host. Uh, it restored from the Veeam VM archive bucket, which is on the S3 object storage. And then it went through, it mounted, published the VM, uh, updated the VM configuration, registered the VM into vSphere. I didn't find that there were any VM tags on the VM, which is correct. I, I don't have any VM tags on that VM. I created a snapshot powered on the VM and updated the session history and then web server 19 underscore restored was then recovered successfully and it is running from the S3 object storage. What we'll do now is we'll go over to our vSphere environment and here we are within our vSphere environment. We can see here on the left hand side that we've got web server 19 underscore restored VM. It's up and running. Uh, same IP address as before, 192.168.1.241. Now we'll go back to the web interface of web server 19. And remember when we checked this last time, it was Friday 10th of April 2020 for today's date and the uptime being 29 days. So now when I click on refresh, we should see today's date as being the restore point date, which was Tuesday, the 7th of April. And it will also change the computer's total uptime as well. So we'll click on refresh now. And you can see that it is Tuesday, 7th of April, 2020. And we have 26 days and 11 hours of uh, computer uptime. So now we'll go back to the vSphere web interface. And we'll just launch the web console for web server 19. We'll press control alt delete, type in my password. And there we have it. We have web server 19 fully functional.
So now all that's left to do is we need to vMotion Web Server 19 out of the S3 object storage and into our NFS data store. So two ways we can do that. If we go back to the vSphere user interface, we can use storage vMotion, whereby we right click and select migrate. Or if you don't have storage vMotion licensed on your vSphere environment, you can go to the Veeam console and you can click on instant recovery. And for your server, you can right click and select migrate to production. Here you can select your destination host, resource pool, VM folder, and the data store that you wish to migrate the VM into. Click on next. And you can select here forced Veeam transport usage and also select a source and target proxy. As I've only got the one VBR server, uh, which is also the proxy server, I'm just gonna leave that on automatic selection. So you just click on next. So here we have a summary of the settings that we've selected so far. We then have the option to delete the source VM files upon a successful quick migration. However, we're not gonna use this option for this migration. We're gonna cancel out of that. And we're gonna go back to the vSphere web UI. And I'm just gonna use storage vMotion. So I'll click on migrate. We'll click on change storage only. We'll then click on next. I'll select VLAB A data store one, and we'll click on next and finish. Now we'll just go to the tasks. And you can see here that web server 19 underscore restored is being vMotioned at the moment. Now, once that's finished, we'll go back and we'll check that it is in VLAB A data store one. But for now, this might take a couple of minutes. So once again, I'm gonna pause the video and come back shortly. Okay, the storage vMotion is now successfully completed for web server 19 underscore restored. So we'll go back to the hosts and clusters view. And here we have web server 19 underscore restored selected. And I'm just gonna edit the virtual machine. And we're just gonna take a look at hard disk one. And we can see here that the data store is VLAB A data store one. Now we'll cancel out of this window and we'll just click on data stores. Within data stores, we'll click on Veeam backup underscore VLAB A VBR. And you can see on the right hand side here that the IP address is the IP address of my VBR server. So we can verify that by going to the VBR server, opening up a command prompt and typing in IP config. So we can see here IPv4 address 192.168.1.231. Now just minimize the command prompt window and back in the Veeam console, just make sure that you've got instant recovery selected and on the right hand side, we'll select our virtual machine, web server 19 underscore restored We'll right click on it and select stop publishing. And stop publishing the following machines, we will select yes. You can see here that the job is completed successfully. So we'll click on okay. And the last part of this video is gonna be restoring files from our SIF server backups. However, before we do that, we're gonna to need to go into our scale out backup repository and take our extents off maintenance mode. So we'll just click on backup infrastructure. And here we have the scale out backup repository selected. So on the right hand side, I'll click Sober one, right click it and untick maintenance mode. Sober one has now been removed from maintenance mode. So we'll click on close and we'll do the same thing for Sober two. Sober two has also been taken out of maintenance mode now. So we'll click on close and we'll click on home. And now just make sure you've got jobs selected. We'll click on the restore button at the top here and we'll select file share. Here we have three options. The first option, we can restore the entire share back to the latest restore points. The second option, we can roll back to a point in time where we get to select the restore point that we wish to restore from. And again, that's the entire share. 
And the third option is to restore individual files and folders. So if you want to restore out of the S3 object storage, so out of your archive, the only option that you can select here to be able to restore out of the archive is restoring individual files and folders. We're going to select restore individual files and folders. Here we have the job name. So I'll expand that, select the share and click on next. And a small summary here, we'll then go ahead and click on finish. The backup browser is then opened and here we can click on folders and files. But we're just going to concentrate on the Veeam documentation folder and this readme.txt file. So we can see with this file that the creation date was 14th of March 2020 and the last time it was modified was the 7th of April 2020. Now by default we're on the latest restore point. I'm going to click on the home menu and we're going to click on all time. And we'll just click back on Veeam documentation. And we can see now in the view that it's also brought up two files that were previously deleted. And in the column on the far right, we can see the deletion date of those files. So we have the option to restore them as well. And because they were deleted on 5th of April, which was which is more than one day because my retention on this file level backup is only one day. However, we're keeping one month of retention in the S3 object storage archive. So I'll be able to pull them out of the um, archive repositories. And we can see with the readme.txt file that it was created on 14th of March 2020. And the last time that it looked like it had any changes was the 7th of April 2020. We'll right click on the readme.txt file. We'll select restore. And then I'm going to select keep because I want to keep the original version and I want to show you the restored version. So I'll select keep. And here we can select which version of the file we wish to restore from. So you can see the last modification date was 7th of April 2020. And that modification date or that version of the file still sits in the scale out backup repository. So then we can go back and it looks like there was a change on the 4th of April. 2020 and that now sits in the archive repository which is the S3 object storage and that goes all the way back to 16th of March uh, 2020. So let's restore that one. Let's restore the earliest one 16th of March 2020. So I'll just make sure I've got that selected and we'll click on next. Here's a summary of the date of file that we're going to be restoring. So we'll click on finish and if we go ahead and click on show details we can see that the restore was completed successfully. So now I'm going to go over to my share and I'm going to click on Veeam documentation. And here we have the readme restore file. So I'm going to open up both files. So I'll open up the source one first and then I'll open up the newly restored file. So the one on the left is the original file and the one on the right is the file that we've recovered from the archive. So you can see here on the original one, these are all the updates I've done to the readme.txt file. And we can see on the right hand side that the file that we've restored out of archive is uh, basically just got the context file. It doesn't have any updates or anything like that. So that's a demonstration of how to restore a single file and specifically out of the archive. And back on the backup browser, uh, we can also do the same thing if we wanted to restore one of these deleted files. So I'll select the deleted version tests. I'll right click, I'll click on restore and I'll click on overwrite on this one because I know that that file doesn't exist. So we'll select that. And you can see here that it is pulling it out of the archive uh, from 28th of March. So we'll click next and we'll click finish. The restore completed successfully. We'll just click on show details. You can see that we've got the green tick here. So now we'll just go back to the share. And here we have the deleted versions test. So we'll click on that. And that was the last update, 28th of the 3rd, which is the date that we've restored the file from. So I'm going to close this now. And we'll close our file share. We'll close this window. And we'll close the backup browser. 
All right, guys, this completes this video on how to perform VM and file level restores with the brand new Veeam Backup and Replication version 10. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but I try to cover as much as I can. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. However, I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.